Hey, this is Ben from Powdy Beer. And uh, Lester called the other day and asked if we could do some, uh, if we could solve an MSMQ problem for him with PowerDBF. The problem is he'd like to be able to set the timeout value on every message in every MSMQ queue on a particular machine to be some arbitrary value. And of course, this machine uh, is not in a domain, it's in a work group, which makes things even more complex. And that means we cannot use the system.messaging MSMQ library to do everything we want to do. We do most of what we want to do, but not all of it. We have to do a combination of the messaging library and the MSMQ WMI provider. So we're going to start in the WMI provider because we need to get a list of queue names. Uh, now we're going to use the MSMQ local active queue data class. This is the, uh, what we're looking at here is the documentation for that MSMQ WMI provider. And uh, all we really need to know is this class name here because we're going to pull some data out of that class name. It's a WMI class. Uh, so let's. Uh, search for WMI in the toolbox and uh, sure enough the first hit is the one we really want which is get WMI object. So I'm going to drag that onto the screen onto the canvas and uh, look at the properties for that thing and uh, right here class that looks really promising. Let's paste in the, cl the class we got from the uh, from the docs and hit play and take a look at what we get. Let's just see if this looks good. Sure enough there's a bunch of class information about uh, each and every uh, each and every queue on my local machine. That's a great, great start. So let's go back to that uh, that sample code we we're looking at, where they were using the system of messaging library. Uh, <clears throat> they're getting a reference to a queue by saying new message queue and by specifying a queue path. And a queue path looks like this. So the question is, do we have anything that looks like that in our data? And if I look at it, sure enough, there's this path name property that looks Perfect. Looks perfect. So let's look at this activity in the PowerShell script mode. And all I did there was I clicked on the uh, little blue button there to bring this activity into a PowerShell script. And it converts that PowerShell activity into uh, into the script. Uh, and if we hit play, we can see the same data that we saw out there in the workflow view. Uh, but we can also see it in the grid view, which we couldn't do out there in the workflow view. And you can see here's the information about each one of those queues in a grid view. And there's that path name that we're looking for. Now if I uh, hold down the control key and click on, on that field, you'll see that we've done the select object path name. Let's hit play and take a look at just path names. Boy, that looks great, each of those path names. From a little bit of trial and error, we discovered yesterday that uh, that, that path name isn't actually a string. Uh, it's something else. We do need to do an expand property here to get just the string out of it. And uh, we can go over in another screencast why that is. That's, that's pretty deep dive into a PowerShell, but uh, uh, for this video, Let's focus on MSMQ and just say you're going to need to have an expand property there to get the string and that path name. So let's replace our getWMI object with this new construct, this new script, and take a look at that output. So the first time we ran, uh, we had a bunch of a uh, whole bunch of data about each queue, and now when we run it, we have just the thing we want, which is each path. So we have now, as a result of this pipeline, uh, a list of strings, uh, a list of paths. So let's store those paths. And let's do that by uh, uh, ch changing the assign to property from nothing to paths. So now if we run this now, uh, the output on the screen we'll have is a dollar paths variable. And we can look at that here in this output window. I just type in dollar paths. And we can look. Look, it's got it's an array of strings. That's excellent. So let's uh, let's iterate that array of strings. If you aren't already familiar with for each, get familiar with it. Uh, it's going to be in your life. And that's how we're going to iterate. We're going to use the PowerShell for each activity here, drag that onto the canvas, and we're going to iterate through the paths that we just set. So the condition on this for each is we're going to want to go through paths. Uh, but that alone isn't good enough. We need to specify what each path is variable is going to go into. So we have to say dollar path in paths. Now that could be any, any variable name you choose. We chose path that makes the most sense for what we're doing here for each path in paths. So just to make sure uh, that our code is doing what we think it's doing, let's set a breakpoint point on the sequence, hit play and see if we have individual paths. So running through getting the paths, we're in the for each loop, we're on the breakpoint, we're close to spin it, switch over to the PS variables, and sure enough we have a path. Hit F5 and run again, we'll see that we have our other path. We have two different queues, and there are those two paths. So that looks excellent. That's exactly what we're looking for. Uh, now we're just going to uh, disable that breakpoint and move on. I move on, I mean, we want to get a reference to uh, these message queues. All we have now is a path to a message queue. Let's go back to that uh, C-sharp code 
and uh, see what they did here. They created a new object of type message Q, and they passed in this Q path. Well, we have a Q path. We know that. So we need to make a new message Q. And of course, they're using the system messaging library. We're going to be doing the same thing. Let's copy the system messaging. We're going to use that in a second. System messaging. And let's look for, if I can go out of the toolbox and search for new, see if we see anything that looks uh, useful in the PowerShell group. New alias, new event. Blah, 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 new object. That looks really good. New object. Let's drag up the new object over there and uh, look at the properties on that. Again, we have a type name. That looks really good. So let's paste in our system.messaging because that's the library within which we're going to find our object. Our object class type is actually a message queue. So let's copy that. Paste that in after the messaging. Okay. So now we have a, we have a type name. Then we need an argument. So we need a, what, what are the arguments we're going to pass in there? And again, they were passed in this Q path that they constructed. So we're going to do the same thing. We have a for each loop, and right now we know we have a dollar path available to us. So we'll just put in dollar path as an argument. So at this point, we have a reference to the Q. Now again, we want to use this Q. So let's go ahead and assign the output of this new object command to a Q. Let's call it my Q. All right. So we have my Q equals new object. Now, um, well, you know, let's do it again. Let's go ahead and re-enable this breakpoint. Uh, let's hit play, and let's see what we get there in that uh, that my queue. So at this point, we have just a uh, queue path. If we uh, step through and let that execute, we should now have in PS variables a my queue. So let's drill into it. Sure enough, we have a queue that looks like a queue. Excellent, 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 excellent. So let's stop. That's all I need to see. I have a queue. I'm happy with that. I'll disable that breakpoint again. Now, I've got a queue. A gotcha that we learned yesterday is that uh, if we want to manipulate uh, um, all the message properties, then we need to set a message read filter on the queue itself. And that makes not a lot of sense, but uh, trust me, we run into this if you, uh, and as a practical matter. And since we need all the properties, we need to set that filter for all the properties and the messages. And again, I'm just going to copy and paste somebody else's uh, code, but I know exactly why I'm doing it and what it is. But it's this message read property filter dot set all. We're going to copy that and put it into our own code. So right after that, we create the message queue. Uh, let's uh, insert, sorry, what the PowerShell button, insert some code. And uh, in fact, we shouldn't even need, we should just be able to do my queue to IntelliSense and, uh, and uh, message read property filter. Right? Okay, exactly. So insert that. Uh, and it's kind of big and ugly, so what we're going to do is we're going to change the annotation. Uh, set read filter so that we don't not look at all that text. That's a nice advantage of doing workflow. Uh, but that's going to set that filter. Just a little bit of uh, housekeeping has to get out of the way. Now we want to be able to get all the messages that are in each queue. So to do that, again, we're going to go into uh, PowerShell Script Editor, start with the my queue as our, as our starting point, and look at the methods on there. What I really want to do is I want to get messages. So I'll start typing G-E-T for get. Look at that. The first method is exactly what we want, get all messages. So we'll just let that autocomplete. Get all messages exactly one. We'll hit insert. So now we have a my queue, get all messages. And again, we want to assign that to something. We'll assign that to messages. So at this point in code, again, if we step through and uh, well, we'll do it. Let's just uh, let's just put that breakpoint back on. Hit play, and we'll. And once we get down there, we should, we'll see that message is being being created. All right, so we're on the breakpoint step. There's a queue. Set the read filter. Get a messages. Now let's look at our PS variable. There's a messages. In this case, we have no elements. That's the first uh, of the two queues. So let's hit play and go to the next queue. All right. And uh, we'll kind of pass right through it. But the second queue is still in context here. And we have messages in that queue. And these look like correct messages. There's the first one, a label. And here's the second one, and whose label is another label. So we, we are getting the messages in the queue. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm satisfied that once we get down to this point, we do have all those messages. So. Let's iterate those messages. As we did before, we'll use the for each keyword to iterate uh, the uh, messages. In this case, we'll put the for each just below those messages. Again, we'll set the condition for each message in messages. And as I am one to do, I'm going to set a breakpoint here and make sure we have a message. 
This is going to help with our intelligence as well, make our life a little bit easier. So, again, we'll iterate the queue paths, grab references to each queue, iterate through those messages. The first queue has no messages. Uh, here we are suspended. We should be able to look at our PS variables, and we have a message here. Let's drill into it, make sure it looks correct. Yes, it looks very correct. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, so I'm satisfied. I can stop that. So we have a sequence. We're going to sign up for each. We have a dollar message available to us. So let us go ahead and come back into a PowerShell editor and manipulate that message. Now, my first attempt at this, I uh, yesterday with Lester, I just did message. I tried to say it's change time to receive equal to this new value. In this case, it's looking for a time span. Uh, you know, is easy enough to do, uh, but as it turns out. Uh, that that wasn't effective. That didn't change the actual message that was in the queue. So we went back and looked at the MSD and the OX, and what we found out is what we have to do if you go to the queue, receive out the message first, okay, and then go ahead and change our timeout to be received just like we are doing there, and then we need to resend the message. Uh, but that that will work. So let's go ahead and insert that uh, code right now into our workflow and see what it looks like. Uh, it comes in as three different activities, the receive by ID, the time you received, and the send. Uh, so if we were to run this right now, uh, we would have uh, what Lester wants, which is to uh, change those time values. So let's just go ahead and, you know, let's throw a breakpoint on there and uh, take a look at those, uh, those messages before we run and then after we run and see what they look like. So we apply, we got a breakpoint. So we create those those queue paths. We iterate those queue paths, get references to the message queues. Because we know on the first uh, of those two, there are no messages, so we'll hit play again to skip by that one and go to the next one. All right, and now we're suspended again now on the second one. So now we have a queue and we have messages. We should have a dollar messages at this point. We do. Uh, we'll do a little PowerShell magic because I want to, what I really want to look at is that time to be to select expand property time to be received. That's what I really care about. And uh, you see that the total seconds on this is 47.55. So we're in the 5,000 range. Let's go ahead and hit play and finish running our script. And what we expect to see after we run our script. Okay. So now the script is run. We know that before our time range was somewhere in the 4700. That was our timeout was about 4700, and we attempted to change that timeout to 10,000. So let's so let's uh, do a MyQ get all messages here and take a look at we'll do that same PowerShell magic again. Select expand property time to be received and see if we successfully changed it. And look now the total seconds 9971. It's just you know, counting down from uh, when we set it a few seconds ago, uh, 30 sec 20 seconds ago, to uh, to uh, 10,000. So sure enough, our script did change the time of value to our arbitrary number of 10,000, um, which is absolutely perfect. This script does exactly what we intend to do. It solves a real-world problem. Um, uh, one of the cool things you can do with this workflow, now that you've got it, is start to annotate this workflow. Uh, it's as easy as uh, selecting any activity and starting to type in some annotation. Uh, get all messages. This is free free form text, and you can edit that either in the uh, script editor, uh, as long as you put in a uh, pound pound prefix. Or as a property, you know, see how that works. Or as a property of the activity. Another thing you can do, uh, which is great, is you can take multiple uh, activities, combine them together by selecting them, hit edit PowerShell. It'll bring up both those activities plus all their their annotation stuff. Just hit the insert a script block, hit replace, and those two will be replaced with one activity. And again, you'll need to change the annotation and be able to see everything that's in there. So that's it. That's the solution. Uh, that is MSMQ with Cardio. We solved a real world problem. And uh, thanks for watching, and we'll do some more videos just like this.